Hi everyone. So uh, I'm going to start a walking base do's and don'ts. Actually, don'ts, a walking base don'ts sort of series because I come across a lot of things and I'm not sure why people do them. Well, I am, but I just think they, they don't, they're not doing themselves any favors by doing these things in their walking base playing or two feel. Um, and I see a lot of it. So the first one, the first one I'm going to start with, and um, I see it in a lot of my students and I see it out there and I know that there are some maybe famous bass players who have done it. <clears throat> uh, the first one is when you're playing a two fill or walking bass is the hammer on note. That, where you can do it in the two fill or walking. Now, first of all, I don't think it sounds very good. Um, I know that there's probably some, like I said before, um, bass players that have done that in the history of the music, but the point of the playing strong walking bass in two fill is that you've got to make every note strong and consistent and sound and, and, and feel strong. And, and you're dealing with an instrument which is really tough to be heard with the drums and everything that's going on. So if you start having these superfluous strong accents, um, I mean, superfluous sort of sounds where there should be stronger beats felt, then you, you're not going to do yourself any favors. So that, for instance, so, so that, and you can, doing that, uh, so the, you, you, the downbeat, the strong note is already softer than the, the skip note before. And that, that also sounds weird when the skip note is louder than the strong beat note. And what that sounds like to me, when you start going, it start, sounds like you're accenting. Sounds like you're trying to accent the two and the four of the eighth note feel. Sorry. And you're really trying to swing too hard. That sort of thing. That's what that sounds like. And that doesn't sound good. The notes need to be consistent and even. And those skip notes generally should be quieter than the, the, the note following it. See that, I'm doing it like that from the other string. Uh, you no, know, but even if I'm doing it with, you know, maybe on the same note, then the, the, the next note is generally stronger. So this is the first, you know, series of, of, of walking bass, uh, you know, don'ts. Just what, when you do a hammer on like that, that just really ask yourself why am I doing it and is it really necessary because I generally don't think it sounds that good uh, at all um, and one final thing is that whenever I've uh, had I mean I've had a few compliments I've been lucky enough to have co compliments from people I've probably had the opposite <laughs> that they haven't told me but um, you know one great drummer I played with once uh, said to me you know Oh, the, I like your playing because there's a point to your note. I can feel where you're placing your note. There's a point. And that's what we're trying to achieve. I think especially with walking bass and playing the upright bass in a jazz setting is have that strong identity with our consistent sound and our beat. And all these superfluous hammer-ons or accent trying to overswing, accenting the accent notes more than the strong beats, this is just detracts from all of that. Um, so um, yeah, this is the first one. I'm, I'm going to do a few more of these. So um, just you know, if you do that, maybe um, ask yourself, why are you doing that? All right. Thanks so much. Bye.